Hey guys, Mr. Omar here with another tutorial for you. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a Microsoft Teams live event. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like to actually run one of those live events. So first to set up your live event, you're going to need to start the Microsoft Teams desktop app. Now this is very important. You need to be running the desktop app for it to be able to work. For you to be able to present and run a Microsoft live event, you need to be using the desktop app. If you're going to be joining someone else's live event as a presenter, you would also need to make sure you're doing it through a desktop app. We've had problems in the past where people have tried to do these live events with their phones or their mobile devices and they cannot get in as a presenter. To set up your live event, open up your calendar on your Microsoft Teams app and go ahead to where it says new meeting. Don't click new meeting because that'll start a normal Microsoft Teams meeting. What you're going to do instead is go to this little menu drop down and take the last option of the three, the live event. When you do that, a new card will pop up. This card is going to ask you to give it a little bit of information. First, you're going to want to give it a title. Location is not really important because we're doing it virtually. And then your start and end date and time is pretty important. This is how your attendees are going to know when the event is starting and when the event is ending. Now, you don't have to start exactly on the time that you say it as. In fact, you can start it at any point beforehand. Um, and you can even go past your normal time as well. This is really just for scheduling so that you can see it on your calendar. And so when parents look at the description of the event, they'll also see the time that you're having your event until. I'm setting up a test one here. So I'm just going to have it for today's date for the time that we're roughly doing right here. You can also put information into the details box. So if you want to put like your schedule for the back to school night, you can just go, you know, Mr. So-and-so will be on from this time to this time. And then a second session will be from this time to this time. This way, again, people who log into the event will see the information there and be able to know exactly when you'll be on. Beyond that, you're going to go on to the right side here and you'll be able to invite other presenters to come in. This is very useful if you happen to have a co-teacher. You can click invite presenters and then start typing the person's name from the DOE, and it could really be anyone from the DOE. So here I'll put Mr. Diesa, and you'll see his name pops up immediately. All I have to do is click on that, and he'll be added as a presenter. This will allow him to be part of the people who are there for when I'm going ahead and I'm showing my presentation. Once you have your presenters selected, you go click Next. Now on this screen, you're going to want to make sure you set this to public, not org wide. Org wide means that only people in the Department of Ed can see it. Since we're asking parents to come as attendees to view this, we want to make it public. We can't use any other app besides Teams. You'll notice that external app or device is grayed out. Now for the event options, this is pretty important. The first option, recording available to producers and presenters, means that after the fact, through Teams, you can get a recorded version of your meeting or your presentation. I like to keep that checked so I can always go back later if I need to. The second option, recording available to attendees, I suggest clicking off. This way, this does not get sent directly to anyone who attends and you can control who you're sending your video to. If someone does ask for a copy of the presentation, you get to make the call whether or not you're gonna send it to them. Another nice feature about the Microsoft Teams Live event is that they give the options of having translated captions. What it will do is it will if the person selects the captions while they're watching, they can select up to six languages here and it'll take what you're saying and automatically translate it into those languages. Now, of course, because this is going to be a live translation, it's not always a thousand percent accurate, but it is a pretty good option we have for the students whose parents might be speaking a different language or who are more comfortable with one language over English. The attendee engagement report uh, can be a useful tool. It'll let you know how many people have logged in, how many people stayed for a certain amount of time. And the last thing that's pretty important to have checked is the Q&A box. The Q&A box allows you to have a special section where parents can send you a question directly. You and any of your presenters will be able to see those questions and respond back to the parent directly. Unless you decide to publish those questions, no one else will see them. Absolutely no one will be able to see your questions except for the person who sent it to you unless you choose to share them. This is great because you can have the option of doing it verbally while you're doing your presentation 
Or you can wait till a spe specific point of your presentation and go, okay, I'm looking at the questions now and answering verbally the ones that you're planning on answering. It really helps you kind of control the conversation. It lets things stay focused on what it is you want to be presenting about your classroom. And it keeps it from being a little too far afield. We know sometimes that happens with meetings where we get on a subject or a parent asks a question that derails us and it just kind of puts us into a different direction. This way we can keep everything focused and parents, if they have other questions, we can always contact us directly. Once you have all of that set up, you hit the schedule button and it'll give you one final card here that gives you all the information in one shot. This is an important card. This will give you the title of your presentation. It'll also have your get attendee link. This is the link that parents need to be able to get on the meeting to watch. This is the link you're going to be sending to Miss Perry. Very simply, the way you're going to get the link to Miss Perry is you're going to click this little attendee link here. And you notice that when I do that, it says that it's copied to clipboard. For those who aren't familiar with what we mean when we say clipboard, the clipboard is simply where your computer saves things in its temporary memory after you've copied them. So for example, I was over here, I hit get attendee link, it copied it to my virtual clipboard in Microsoft Office. I then go down to say Microsoft Word here, and I can go ahead and just right click and paste it in. And the link will be right here. So this is what you'll do in your email. You'll just go into your email to Ms. Perry, right click and paste your attendee link. This is what she'll post on the website for the parents. Now that you have this all set up, you can hit close and it'll now show up on your calendar as one of these little cards. Now let's say you need to edit something before the event. You can always double click it and you can always go into edit and it'll bring you back to the screens we were on before. Let's say someone says, hey, I'd like to join in on your meeting. Or let's say you decide to adjust what sort of information is going to be in the details. You can go ahead and you can change those things. Once you change anything, you can always hit update. And it'll save all the changes you've made. Now let's take a look at what this looks like once you're presenting. To get into your meeting on the day of the event, you would again just click on the little card in your calendar and click the join button. When you click the join button, it'll open up your Microsoft Teams live event, and you'll have the option of turning on your camera, turning on your microphone, and all those good things. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna join the event. And we see our producer view. Once you join your event, you'll be greeted with the producer view. The producer view has a few features that you might not be familiar with. First and foremost, you have your producer bar on the bottom here. This is gonna have any people or content that you're gonna be sharing will show up here that you can select from. For example, if I turn my camera on, now I have my mic muted so I don't get a, a bad echo in here, but you can control your mic and everything from there. You'll also notice that in the top left corner, it says pre-live. That's because I haven't actually started my event yet. Now the way this works is the content on the left is your queue. This is the stuff that has not gone live yet and is not going to be shown to anyone in the event. So I can go ahead and put myself up here and you can see that it is ready to go live when I'm ready to send it over to the right side. Now, because the live event hasn't started, I can send this live and it'll send it over to the right side here, but I still haven't gone live. The reason I know no one can see this is because there's still an orange box around this right uh, image of me over here. In order for it to go out to anyone, I have to hit the start button. Make sure you do that before you start, because if you don't, you'll be sitting there and talking for three hours and no one will be able to see you. Now, if you're curious what the attendees are gonna see, you'll see I have two attendees here. They're both me, my cell phone and a laptop in another room. If you wanna see what the attendees look, what the attendees are seeing, I can show you right here. Where'd we go? There we go, so the attendees. This is what the attendees are seeing right now. The attendees are seeing that the live event hasn't started yet, and you'll see that there is a live event Q&A box for them on the right side. They don't see any of the other people that are in the event, and they can do things like pull up the information that you provided about the event. Here it just has the time and everything, and anything I would have put in that description box will show up here. There's really very little they can do besides watch you and leave. Let's say you had something you wanted to share. You have a PowerPoint or something you want to be showing to people, 
you can go ahead and click the share button up top here. And it'll currently have everything you have open on your computer will show up down here for you to pick. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna share a presentation that I use through Prezi that I have open on my Internet Explorer window here. Now, let's say I also have music I wanna be able to play. So I'm gonna go ahead and there's a little button here to click that says include computer sound. This will include any sounds your computer is making while you're presenting. This should also include any music you might be playing in the background or any other pre-recorded audio you have even while it's not on the screen. It is important to note that if you have something on the screen like your PowerPoint and your microphone is unmuted, you will still be heard. If another person is on the screen, let's say you have your co-teacher on the screen and they're presenting, if your microphone is unmuted, you will be heard. Your microphone will be hot and live as long as it is unmuted, even if you're not on the screen, so be aware of that. So let's say I'm ready to show my presentation. I'm gonna go ahead and click my Prezi, which is down here, that I'm gonna use for my parents. Now it'll pop up the window and you'll see that it has it in red. That's letting me know that even if I have this full screen, I'm looking at my presentation, I know that this is what's going to be shared because it's what's in red. So I have it down here to be able to select from like I would a presenter. So I can click on it and it'll go on my left side box here. Note that the size of the window you're using will determine how it views, uh, shows up for the parents. So if you have it minimized a little bit, it'll be minimized. If you have a full screen, it'll be full screen for them. Just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and start our event. I'm gonna go over here and hit this start button. Now this start button, when you hit it, it will give you a warning that it is going to start and you have up to 16 hours. You're gonna hit continue. And once the box around your face goes red, you are live. It'll also say live in the top left corner here. So right now, the parents should be seeing me talking. And in fact, if I switch over to that view I have over here of the event, you'll see that it says it still hasn't started. But that's because it's on about a 10 to 15 second delay. So if we just wait for that, and here we go, the event has started. There is a delay, be aware of that, that is by design. Um, that is a feature of Microsoft Teams. Uh, it is something that is just the way it's set up. So, so let's say I'm a parent, I'm hearing what someone's saying and I wanna put a question. So I can go ahead and I can ask a question. I can go ahead and type a question. How often do you do homework? And I can go ahead and send that. Now the parent can also post as anonymous if they want to. And it goes up here and only the parent will see this. Now when you're in Microsoft Teams, if you go over to your Q&A panel over here, give it a second to load up, and you will see that here's the question that has been asked. Notice it's in the column that says new, not the column that says published. So how if no give homework? Let's say I'm talking and I don't wanna verbally say this, and I'm good at talking and typing at the same time. I can go ahead and speak while I'm giving the, present, the answer for the parent. Uh, I'm not good at talking and typing at the same time, so I'd have to actually stop talking able to in order to answer the question. And then that answer will go just to the parent. And again, over here in their view, you'll see that they have their answer from the moderator, who will be you. My face is still live, but when I send the presentation live, it goes over to the parent, so they're seeing the presentation. And then I can pull up my presentation that's sharing and start presenting it full screen, knowing that it's being presented because it has the red box around it. So now, if you wanna see what the parents are seeing, again, we'll go over back to a Microsoft Teams thing. And there we have it, you see that we have the presentation running, and this is what the parents would see. Overall, not a bad way to be able to kind of control what the parents are seeing and what you're presenting to everyone. All we have to do is we go through our PowerPoint, we share what we need to share. If you want to go back to the person speaking, you can click back here and then again, send live. Again, it'll take a second and I'll come back over here and we have your Microsoft Teams live event. Now, if you've decided that you needed a break or you're gonna have like that break in between sessions, if you mute your mic and turn off your camera, this is what will show up for the parents. So they'll see that the live event will continue in a moment. Uh, you can also, if you wanted to, mute your microphone and mute your desktop audio and just put up your own custom image up there the same way you shared your presentation here. 
uh, if you want to make parents aware that there are specific times you'll be back. So those are the basis of how to use your Microsoft uh, Teams live event. Uh, if you have any other questions about this, you can always find me in the building. I'll be in room 118. I'd be more than happy to help you out, either setting it up on your calendar or with testing you out different ways you would like to run it. As always, I hope this was useful for you guys, and I hope you're having a great night.